we're back with part two of our online tier list. This time, we're going to be discussing high tiers and top tiers, and it's surprisingly large. At least the online meta is opening some doors for some different characters. These characters tend to be pretty solid offline, but tend to get an extra buff online. Some get huge buffs, and others were so good offline that they stay good online. As a quick refresher, we do our tier list based on a mix of theory, pro opinion, and set research. I do that so like now if it, like I have like, you know, like I have data and something, I don't know. The theory matters a bit more than online tournaments because the results of online tournaments can be pretty wonky. The online tournaments can be filled with a lot of DQs, a lot of people not playing their mains, a lot of online players just not taking the tournament seriously, or a lot of online players or top players just simply not entering at all. We're also basing this only off of online tournaments because quick play has a lot of weird things going on and only really two stages to play from. Overall, the online meta is just straight up hard to read, and a lot of the online tournaments have different rule sets of weird stages. And some tournaments aren't even region locked, so there's players playing from Mars and players playing from Jamaica playing against each other, which kind of strengthens and weakens the online tier list. So while you watch this, don't take it seriously. Just sit back and enjoy and banter the comments. And that brings us to our question of the day. Which character do you think has the least amount of change with the online play compared to the offline counterpart? And if you want to change your play for the better, be sure to check out ProGuys.com, where we have courses happening literally every day with coaches dedicated to help you out for every question that you have. Also, be sure to check out our Discord that we have, link in the description below, where you can find people to play friendlies with, and it makes it more, I guess, connected than I would say when it comes to quick play. King DDD finally returns to high tier, and all it took is a bunch of input delay and potential lack of an ethernet cord. Even on more stable connections, DDD's Gordo is hard to react to. That large bouncing hitbox can define neutral for a lot of matchups and help King DDD win them. As a heavy, King DDD is combo food in a pretty bad way, so it helps that combos won't be quite as optimized or consistent online. His hitboxes are pretty good too, so he can control a lot of space with a mix of deadly and high damage options. Players like Zaki are doing well with him right now in Japan, but he's still got a lot of flaws, like slow speed. He can't chase down a lot of zoners who can camp him out. Plus, there's still enough combo game online that his disadvantage looks rough. Banjo and Kazooie If DDD's Gordos are hard to react to, then Banjo's Wanderings are something else. Wandering gets an insane buff online, making it unreactable at a longer distance and harder to whiff on punish. Banjos get away with this move, and with projectiles as a whole, more than they would offline. Banjo-Kazooie were already a pretty decent zoning duo, and online they're even better. They still have old problems like struggling to kill and having a mediocre disadvantage state, but they're looking in rare form online. If you're talking about heavy zoners, you gotta talk about the Belmonts. The Belmonts have a super lopsided kit with some of the best projectiles in the game and worst disadvantage tools. They can play keep away super well and do a ton of damage while they're at it. Those strengths only get better online, where it's even harder to react and punish them. Their disadvantage gets better too since it's harder to edge guard and combo them. Their recovery is so bad and they're so slow that they do still lose matchups and don't nearly dominate the meta. They're pretty much the quintessential zoners, so they get a nice fat buff from online. Offline, they're the new game Belmonts. Online, they're loaded up with upgrades and ready for the final boss. Me Gunner The true quintessential zoner is of course Me Gunner. Behold, the embodiment of the projectile, the face of getting walled out, the heart of defensive play. Me Gunner becomes suffocating in an environment where it's hard to react to projectiles. Me Gunner still has downsides, like slow speed and a decent amount of end lag. If Me Gunner doesn't get time or space to set up, then the character can struggle, especially against some of the aggressive picks in top tier. But the mix of both zoning and anti-zoning tools makes Me Gunner a really strong choice for the online meta, much stronger than the offline one. Robin. Robin was unique in Fire Emblem for being a player insert character with actual personality and character design. In Ultimate, they're unique for being a Fire Emblem character that's a zoner. That gives them both the advantage of disjoints and hitboxes as well as good zoning tools. It helps even more that a lot of these tools can hit like a truck. Make a mistake or put in a wrong input you weren't ready for, and it might mean death against Robin. Since online play tends to lead to more mistakes, Robin gets stronger. However, Robin's speed growths are just as garbage online as they are offline. That's still a struggle for them, as they'll need to chase down camping opponents or react to characters that spam quick options. They might be high tier, but given the lack of results in mains, it's hard to say that's only in theory. Zelda The Queen of Hyrule has never been great in Smash, except, if you're playing Ultimate Online, Defensive Zoners Edition. Zelda's specials become harder to react to and therefore harder to punish. She gets a much wider threat range than normal and commands a lot more respect. 
She will drop some kills from her forward and back air, but overall she's definitely buffed. Even if her aerials kill less, she has grounded kill options that get buffed. Her main downfall is that she still doesn't have super great normals and can still be overwhelmed by the good all around characters in high tiers. Her small player base is still doing pretty well online and she feels high tier, but she still doesn't have the stuff to beat the top online meta picks like Wolf, Sonic, Snake, and so on. Like a lot of the high tiers here, Hero has a good mix of disjoints and range that makes him pretty powerful. It also helps that he can't get edge guarded or pressured as effectively online. Bounce might even help more than all of that. The bounce spell makes for a nice anti-zoning tool in online tournaments where there are more projectiles. His other spells get buffed too as well as are harder to read and react to. Things like crits and the occasional burst of luck will help too, but mostly it's just good hitboxes and ranged tools. Like Zelda, Hero can't quite keep up with the non-zoning top tiers and is going to struggle with high pressure characters that actually benefit from lag, like Cloud and Roy. Toon Link The most colorful and cell shaded of the links tends to get overlooked. Toon Link isn't super meta online or offline in the west, but in Japan, Toon Link's notably more popular than Young Link. That's weird. In Japan's online tournaments, Toon Link is looking pretty good. Players like level 1 are getting some good results and it does make sense. Toon Link has some of the strongest pure projectiles of any of the links. His boomerangs, bombs, and arrows become even harder to deal with online, as do his fast raw kill moves. Toon Link does have some trouble with certain bomb confirms online, but he looks pretty good on Wi-Fi. Young Link Young Link is the main link in the US. Offline, he's known for his insanely versatile combo trees. Online, he's much more about projectiles and safe moves. Young Link doesn't necessarily get better or worse on Wi-Fi. He just gets a different style. Young Link mains still do well online and the character makes appearances in tournaments, but he's not strong in the same way and he's pretty vulnerable to rushdowns since he's so lightweight too. He might lose out to other top tier zoners too. That puts Young Link in the lower end of the high tier. Pretty good, but not crazy good. Olimar Olimar is in the similar spot as Young Link. He might be slightly worse or about the same strength online as offline. His changes are less balanced and more style. Alomar's intense advantage state is less intense now that it's much harder to react to DI than to chain hits together. However, some of Alomar's keep away tools are better. The tiny leader of the carrot people basically has to run away and play defensive the whole game. If you don't know a lot about Alomar's game, that might seem normal, but it's actually a big change. Offline, Alomar blows you up or gets blown up, but online, Alomar is much more of a defensive zoner. He's still pretty good, but in a different way that makes it hard for Alomar mains to adjust. He's also a lot more vulnerable as a lightweight with slow speed. So we see Alomar mains like Myron still doing well online, but maybe slightly worse than offline. You should probably be able to spot a trend of high tier and with zoners online by now. Duck Hunt is next in that trend. Just like the other zoners, he also fits the bill of losing some of his complex setups, but gets buffed overall. Duck Hunt's can and side B are now even harder to react to, making them even more deadly. It's going to be easier for a Duck Hunt mains to get kills online. That solves one huge struggle for the character. However, Duck Hunt will still be vulnerable to savvy edge guarders. Duck Hunt is still going to struggle with his zone breakers and a character like Cloud spamming back airs on the shield or at ledge. Wi-Fi will help him rival out a lot of zoners and will help fend off other characters that normally would beat him, but it's still not enough to make him top tier. Wii Fit Trainer Offline, Wii Fit Trainer is a more balanced character. They have a mix of aggressive and defensive tools. Online, the Wii Fit Trainer definitely gets a big buff to the defensive side of things. Wii Fit Trainer's classic ledge shenanigans become harder to punish, along with projectiles as a whole. Mashing out of Wii Fit's jab becomes a bit trickier too. Some of Wii Fit Trainer's hitboxes might be harder to land online, but that doesn't matter as much as their zoning. Online, Wii Fit Trainer can get away with more ledge stalling, more zoning, and even find more space to deep breathe. The character doesn't have the tools to pressure and destroy top defensive characters like Pac-Man or Snake, but also doesn't have a way to fend off more balanced pressure characters like Wolf or Cloud. So these soulless fitness mannequins aren't quite top tier. Captain Falcon So we've talked about so many zoners buffed online, let's talk about a rushdown character for a change, Captain Falcon. Captain Falcon does get nerfed as his really precise combos don't function as well. However, his disadvantage state gets better as it becomes harder to combo and edge guard him. His super fast aerials and speed also make him harder to pin down. He gets good rewards off of grabs as well, which is nice online, where people shield more often. He can even fare well against some zoners by using his speed and grab game to fluster them into making mistakes. Falcon becomes pretty strong online, but in a more spammy way. It isn't uncommon to see Falcons make top 64 or top 32 in big online tournaments. It is uncommon to see them make top 8, as their online style will throw off even some of the best offline Falcons. That style also falls apart against the best spacers at top tier. It can be hard for Falcon to break down a patient wall of disjoints. Shulk Did somebody say disjoints? Every time somebody says the word disjoint, 
Shulk's neutral layer gets one pixel larger. One day, it will cover the entirety of Battlefield, and the character will no longer be tournament legal. Shulk stays at roughly the same position online as offline, but his style changes quite a bit. His very precise, advanced techniques aren't as feasible online. Instead, it's more about using his hitboxes and spacing really well. We've talked a lot about big disjoints being great online, and the reason is parrying. These moves often have too little end lag, shield stun, and distance to punish easily. But with parrying, many things become very unsafe. Because the amount of frame delay in a match can easily change several times, parrying becomes super risky and difficult online. So Shulk's hitboxes are much more suffocating and hard to deal with online, but it's at the cost of cool stuff like dial storage and shield combo breaking. Lucina Based off the logic with disjoints and spacing, you might expect Lucina to be in top tier. However, Lucina's big strength comes from her advantage state. Her ledge trapping, her juggling, and her edge guarding are some of the best in the game, despite still being optimized. Online, it's just harder to push the advantage. Lucina gets a big nerf because of that, but she still stays in top tier because of her spacing and shield pressure because they're pretty good. Plus she's not super combo reliant, and she has lots of good defensive tools. Her up special is even harder to punish online, so she's still pretty darn good. She's just not top tier anymore. Wario Wario takes a small drop from online play for similar reasons. His advantage state is literally explosive. He has some of the most varied and dangerous combo trees in the game. Online latency makes a lot of these branches wilt and fall from the tree. However, Wario still has the benefit of insane aerial mobility and good weight class, which makes him great for timing out and camping where needed. Since most online matches last longer, Wario also gets more wafts. And to top it off, Wario has some pretty low end lag moves, meaning that he fits the spammy online meta well. Wario could still be top tier even with the loss of combos. The issue is, the meta doesn't look great for him. It's full of disjoints that can be tough for Wario to break past. However, up tilt to waft and falling up air into waft still work well on good connections. So Nintendo's nasty, weird orb band isn't going lower than high tier. Mario Like his weird, bizarro world alter ego, Mario also doesn't drop or rise up the list. He loses some of his immense combo potential, but not enough to seriously weaken his damage output. Whatever he loses in combo potential, he gains back in kill power. Mario can up and even forward smash with impunity online. His neutral tools still work just as well too. Cape, Fireball, Flood, all of that is still good. Online Mario does need to run a different style than offline. That's part of the reason why we don't see Dark Wizzy in online tournaments. But a lot of the other combo character mains, like Pichu and Fox mains, switch to Mario for Wi-Fi tournaments. This plumber is still really good and probably hangs on the fringes of top tier. Bowser Mario's other rival is in high tier too. That's right, it's Piranha Plant. Just kidding, it's Bowser. Bowser benefits massively from online. He gets comboed less hard and he's more likely to land his own hard hits. His combos don't get hit by lag and he can really abuse how often people shield. Fire Breath gets even more annoying. His falling hitboxes become even more lethal and his disadvantage gets even easier. In terms of raw strength and speed, Bowser could be top tier pretty easily, but he's also held back by the meta. Contending with characters like Pac-Man and Sonic can be really hard. Bowser is surprisingly fast for a giant turtle, but he's still not that fast. Bowser Jr. You might have expected Bowser to make it here, but you probably didn't expect Bowser's weird gross children. Bowser Jr. is making a big shakeup in Europe, where Snormada is making top 8 consistently in Wi-Fi tournaments. In the US and Japan, Bowser Jr. has also gotten weirdly far in brackets. It's gonna sound weird, but it's because Bowser Jr. is like a mini Sonic. Bowser Jr.'s clown car is much harder to react to and punish, just like Spin Dash. It also leads into combos that work online, like with Sonic. It's just not nearly as troublesome or safe as Spin Dash. However, Bowser Jr.'s ranged tools get buffed too, and Bowser Jr.'s aerials can be pretty spammable too. All that adds up for a real surprise Wi-Fi character. Bowser Jr. might be on the lower end of the Wi-Fi high tier, or higher end of the mid tier. It's hard to know for sure. Either way, these weird little clown turtle monstrosities are surprisingly good online. Pokemon Trainer while Pokemon Trainer doesn't lose a lot of strength online, the character becomes a lot different, and that's because it's three characters for the price of one. Squirtle's combos aren't quite as good, making Squirtle a bit worse and riskier to play, but Charizard's back air spam and forward tilt becomes so lethal and so much less risky. Ivysaur is hitting with Razor Leaf conversions and aerials more often as well. The changes for Trainer probably balance out to about even, but a lot of Pokemon Trainer players don't play that character much online. Plus, using Pokemon Switch to break out of combos gets more difficult, so Pokemon Trainer ends up being a strong high tier rather than the top tier. Some of the biggest upsets online have come from Greninja mains. That's for good reason. Greninja's fast-paced aggression is harder to counter online. Some of his combos are harder to execute, but are still reliable. His great dash attack with his low-profile dash animation makes him a menace on the ground as well. His low-lag aerials make him pretty hard to pin down in the air as well. 
In the spammy and neutral heavy world of Smash Ultimate Online, Greninja fits in weirdly well. His offline problems are still there, like poor out of shield options, but overall, he's a really strong online pick because of a mix of his elusive speed and fast options in neutral. The buff he gets to online honestly isn't that huge though, Greninja's not far from top tier offline either. Here's his owner to match the rushdown. Snake might be Ultimate's Apex Zoner and certainly its Apex Trap character. Both archetypes get a nice buff from online play. Plus, Snake has a ton of raw details that go great with online play. His dash attack is annoyingly good. His moves are annoyingly fast. His hitboxes are pretty big and long-lasting. He's heavy. His disadvantage is his main weakness. Online makes these strengths stronger and his weakness is less noticeable. He's a shoo-in for the S-tiers on most online tier lists. However, like in offline, there's a level of potential versus results with Snake that people don't talk a lot about. Snake has undeniably crazy potential in a kit that seems so good at a glance, but his mains don't win that many tournaments. A lot of times they don't even get top 8. Still, he's a hugely popular character online and offline with great tools, so he feels top tier. Samus. In the world of offline, Snake is probably the apex zoner, but in the world of online, it's Samus. This character goes with Wi-Fi like peanut butter goes with jelly. Samus and Wi-Fi get looped together so often, you've probably built a subconscious association. But just what makes Samus so good online? Well, for starters, we're all realizing she's really good offline. After that, it's probably a really great and really fast projectiles. Charge Shot is super hard to react to online and it combos, kills, or does a lot of damage on hit. Then there's her large aerials that control a ton of space. Her forward air and Zare can be pretty tricky to punish online and are great for controlling space. Then there's the game plan. Samus' basic game plan just works better on Wi-Fi where it's harder to react to things. When she conditions you to shield a projectile and goes in for a grab, it's harder to react and dodge the grab. When she conditions you to jump, it's harder to beat, dodge, or punish the forward air. As a character, Samus is designed to have a great advantage and poor disadvantage. But since you need to chase her down and react to her roles and movements to punish her, her disadvantage gets better. Her advantage stays about the same because her long-range tools are harder to react to. All that is a recipe for a character that becomes synonymous with online play. Oh, and for what it's worth, Quick and other Samus mains have been doing very well online. Pac-Man. But Samus is old news. The new online zoner to complain about is Pac-Man. Pac-Man's hard to break down offline. Online, it's even harder. Punishing Pac-Man's landing options become even riskier because it's hard to react to Hydrant. His items make him threatening at several ranges in that vantage. And he's got a lot of quick aerials to work with. His defense gets better when you can't react to it, and his offense doesn't lose a lot from online delay. Pac-Man is a pretty common and pretty strong Wi-Fi pick that we don't see win often, but we do see him in a lot of top 16s and a lot of top 8s. He's already a great character in online, he gets a pretty nice buff on top of that. Mega Man. Mega Man is another interesting zoner in the top tier. He's pretty good online, but is more of a mid-range zoner, and he's not quite like Samus, Snake, or even Pac-Man. Mega Man is good online because he fits the meta pretty well if you could play him patient. His pellets and leaf shield can disrupt just about any opponent online. The punish window feels impossibly small for so many characters, so he gets away with it too. This is particularly crucial because Mega Man becomes a rare counter to Sonic, one of the strongest characters in the online meta. His giant arrows are great for the moments when it comes down to a battle of positioning and spacing. It's also helpful that he's as heavy as a robotic child full of weapons should be. So he can outlast in a meta where everyone struggles to get more kills, and his kills become easier too. If the Metal Blade doesn't work, a raw up tilt, up smash out of shield, or aerial might. Rob, the more robotic of robot friends, succeeds online for a lot of similar reasons. He's heavy and has good projectiles and raw kill options. But Rob is one of the best online picks in the game, and is a feature of Netplay Top 8, so there's more to it. Rob has a few options which can be tricky to punish offline, and if they're spaced right. Online, it's even trickier. Down tilt and neutral air are both good examples of moves that Rob can spam more safely online. Both of these moves lead to reliable conversions too. And then there's the projectiles. Rob's projectiles are super versatile, working in several ranges as edge guarding tools, combo starters, and traps. Even in a low lag environment, Rob's gyro becomes trickier to grab, shield, and pick up. Getting hit by it leads often to another hit or death as well. Even if Rob can't convert off a hit, his huge aerial hitboxes make him extra dangerous when he puts you in a corner. Online, those hitboxes can be harder to punish if they whip. All of that is part of the reason why we're seeing a lot more Rob results during quarantine. Cloud works a bit like Rob in that he's got a ton of big, hard-hitting hitboxes. Offline, you could parry these hitboxes reliably and pretty easily. These parries make any blatant aerial spam a lot easier to deal with. Online, it's way harder and riskier to parry those Cloud back airs. This is pretty rough for Cloud's opponents too. It's kind of mental damage. The Cloud player is mostly timing and spacing the same aerial, while the opponent is thinking hard about how to deal with it, whether the parry is worth the risk or not. 
Cloud's main weakness, his recovery, becomes a lot harder to exploit too. It's a lot tougher to react to Cloud's head popping up off the lip of the ledge. It's also easier to miss a hit on him off stage. Giving stage control back to him is even riskier than normal since he could pin opponents in a corner with well-timed aerials. To top it all off, long, messy matches favor him since he could build more and more limit. Combine every pro player switching to him with the Final Fantasy VII Remake, and we're seeing Cloud pretty much everywhere. Wolf Wolf is the other big backup character for so many pro players. It's looking like the early days of Ultimate again. A great projectile character, great hitboxes, great kill moves, great reflector, and great ability to trade. What more do you need from an online character? Wolf does lose a lot of his complex combos and tech chases online, but overall, he's buffed. His kit makes him one of the best all-arounders online. Even his flaws fit online. He's heavy, combo food, and easily edgeguarded. All of that matters less online than offline. Wolf's back at the head of the pack, and it's pretty clear why. Pikachu One of the many top tiers here, Pikachu is one of the few who might be nerfed by Wi-Fi. Pikachu's lightning loops aren't as reliable. Plus, as a light character with somewhat poor kill options, there's always a chance Pikachu runs into an errant, rage-powered kill move. But Pikachu balance out enough to stay in top tier. We see Isan performing about the same online and offline, and we're still seeing Pikas in general. That's because Pikachu just has to change styles and options. Pikachu still has good combo trees and a great projectile, and it's super hard to punish aerials. Even if edge guarding is harder and the damage doesn't come as easily, Pikachu makes up for an evasiveness and good neutral. But this Pikachu's a lot more chilled out. It's the patient Pikachu holding down Ash's team, not the Pikachu electrifying 8-year-olds in tall grass. Inkling These Wi-Fi times have seen Cosmos fall back more on Inkling than Pikachu, and to good results. Like Greninja, Inkling's super hard to hit due to low-profile dash attack and fast aerials. Inkling's go-to kill confirm is also just as reliable unless you're downloading all seasons of Pokemon while playing online. Things like Roller become just a bit harder to punish too, meaning Inkling gets more berry kills and dies less from misusing Roller. Inkling's backer spam feels more potent and hard to break down as well, and that great grab game fits in perfectly too. Inkling flies under the radar compared to Robber Sonic, but this character is great on Wi-Fi too. Struggling to kill an edge guard can also help the opponent make a comeback, but Inkling's still one of the hardest characters to punish on Wi-Fi. Game & Watch Speaking of hard to punish characters on Wi-Fi, you already know who I'm talking about. Game & Watch's off-kilter, frantic playstyle is pretty much a natural fit online. That said, even though he's up in the top tier, he could be a bit overrated. While he's good online, Game & Watch is now spamming in a world where everyone's spamming, so it's weirdly less noticeable. And Game & Watch is super light, so it's more likely that he gets caught by a move and dies online than offline. However, this 2D terror has so many great hitboxes, quick moves, tight punish windows, and workable combos that he's great online. The bucket really tops things off and lets him stand tall in a lot of important matchups. The main downside for Game & Watch is Sonic. Sonic's increased prevalence hurts the missing link of handheld gaming. It's one of his few bad matchups offline, and it gets worse online. So while Game & Watch is still a top tier online, he might not be a clear top tier or one of the top 10 Wi-Fi characters. Palutena Palutena is another character that's just about as popular online as offline. You can see her getting pretty high up in almost any online tournament. Some players even pick her up as a Wi-Fi character. Online, her nair loops are still effective and backer spam is even stronger. Her explosive flame and auto reticle are more likely to catch opponents out too. Having a great grab game is nice too, and a good way for her to ledge trap online. However, Palutena is probably one of the weaker online top tiers. She's still good, but she does lose some of her cooler and heavier damage combos. She also can struggle to kill because edge guarding is harder and her smash attacks aren't great. That's rough against a lot of other online top tiers who could come back with early kill options or stall out with speed. Roy When it comes to getting early kills, Roy is our boy. Roy's not a character you'd expect to see do super well on Wi-Fi, but the results speak for themselves. And if you think about it, Roy's mechanics say a lot more. First, Roy is a character that requires you to be on your toes. If you don't react and shield a smash attack, or side B, or even a jab, that's curtains. A lot of his really good moves can be pretty low end lag, or just used in a tricky way where they're hard to punish. So good players who know how to space a move can easily go in and out of their threat range, throwing out hitboxes. Online, the other player, no matter how good, is more likely to mess up or not react in time. That leads to Roy landing more hits, which often kill or give a lot of stage control back to him. So Roy's really good in online tournaments even though he does lose some reaction tech chasing and some combos. It also helps that his bad offstage game and his mediocre disadvantage don't matter as much on Wi-Fi. And it helps pretty well that he plays pretty well into lots of other online top tiers like Rob or Sonic. Ike If anyone hits harder than Roy, it's Ike. Ike is the top tier for a really simple reason, neutral air. Pairing is harder online and for Ike that's a massive blessing. At perfect spacing, Ike's huge hitboxes are very hard to punish. 
In the early meta, they were all Leo needed to dominate, but Ike fell out of favor as people learned how to parry the neutral air and then run in and punish Ike's landing lag. Online is like one of those early meta days, where Ike can make good neutral out of mostly nares. With a parry or lose your shield input to delay, and Ike gets a combo or kill off that nair. We're seeing Ike doing crazy well in online tournaments. Raven King was already a great player and is one of the best Ike mains offline. Now he's a consistent feature of at least top 16, often top 8. It helps even more that Ike does pretty well against Ness and can hold evenly against Roy. On Wi-Fi, this character is a mercenary you want to hire. Yoshi Let's go back to Japan and look at one of the most feared online picks, Yoshi. In case you don't know, Ron isn't just a 50th ranked player on the PGR and the best Yoshi in Japan, he's the patron saint of Wi-Fi warriors. Since he lives in a more remote region of Japan, Ron is a top player offline and basically the final boss online, and he does it all for Yoshi. So some of this is based just on how well Ron does with the character, in the same way Joker's rank offline comes from Leo. However, Yoshi also has some great tools for Wi-Fi. His moves have very long duration, making them pretty hard to punish. He hits really hard and has lots of nice kill moves too. He's also super durable and hard to KO. Plus he's gotten the perfect kind of tech chase for Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi can buff a character's tech chase if their hits knock down closer to their character. This basically gives less time for the opponent to tech and more time for the player to react. Yoshi has a pretty good online tech chase, so on top of great results, Yoshi's a pretty great Wi-Fi character. Link Here's another character from the Japanese meta, Regular Adult Link. Link Classic never really took off in the States, but he's pretty popular in Japan. Obviously there's T, but he's much more common online as well and he gets pretty solid results. It's pretty much because of his nice range specials in Neutral Air. Young Adult Link's Neutral Air is one of the best moves in the game offline. It's insanely long lasting and hard to punish. Online it gets only better. The punish window is even harder to hit and it's just as good as ledge trapping. Not to mention, the overall meta of online play helps factory standard Link out a ton. He doesn't rely as much on combos and wins by beating the enemy in neutral over and over again. In online, that style gets a big buff as players go for less combos and play less fast overall. Playing a great online Link is so tough that you kinda wanna start feeling for Ganondorf. Zero Suit Samus We're about to get the two characters we know you'll see coming, so here's a spicier pick first. Zero Suit Samus has a reputation as one of the worst characters online. It's a reputation that's simultaneously true and false. If you try to play a Zero Suit Samus in her offline style, she'll feel like low mid-tier at best. Her combos are too tight, she can't get those sick reaction tech chases, and she dies so early if she whiffs. But, she has an online style that's insanely hard to beat. While Zero Suit Samus' offense gets a big nerf, her defense gets a big buff. Her flip kick is insanely tough to punish and react to online. Since it buries, trying to punish means risking death, so Zero Suit Samus can spam Flip Kick online and have almost no disadvantage state. Now, combine that with Zero Suit Samus' insane mid-range tools, and this character can play an insane game of keep away. It's not going to look as cool as offline, it's definitely not going to be as explosive, but this character was doing well in online tournaments well before quarantine. The oppressively defensive style is a big reason why. Ness Okay, now we're down to the final two characters, the ultimate Wi-Fi warriors. First up is Ness. Ness loses very little and gains a whole lot from online play. His PK fire is much harder to react to and punish, all leading to just as many combos. His aerial drift and attacks become even harder to punish too. Playing against Ness online is pretty much like being on the wrong side of a tower defense game. It's a constant game of dodging and enduring an endless array of energy attacks. Ness might be light, but he's so elusive that he's harder to kill online. He hits open for great online tech chases. His combos work about as normal as well. His advantage state stays just about as good, if not a little better. His disadvantage state gets easier. We could go on and on, but you get the picture. Ness is one of the best characters online. His only real drawback is that it's hard for him to deal with big disjoint characters like Ike or Wolf, but he makes up for that by being a zoner killer. Sonic You can't make a Wi-Fi tier list without first talking about the biggest online menace of all. Sonic gets a big, big buff from the internet because of his heavy mid-2000s pop punk energy. Jokes aside, Sonic may be the best character online, and it's because of reactions. Sonic's spin dash and homing attack are notoriously safe offline. They become super safe online, basically because of their speed. Most attacks are safer to punish online, but only because it's harder to react to their whiff and punish. Spin dash gets safer because it's so fast and covers so much distance. It's a bit like Banjo's wandering, but if Banjo had an infinite amount per stock. Parries, which can make the move easier to react to, now won't work as well either. So Sonic can spam spin dash and homing attack and dash around the stage endlessly. Even if Sonic can't kill as well online, he's so good in timeout scenarios that it doesn't matter. It's honestly unfortunate how good Sonic is on Wi-Fi. It leads to a ton of character hate, which often leads to mean-spirited player hate. 
and it forces everyone to repeatedly grapple with the character's rushed and flawed design. Wanted to watch a nice, fast-paced game of Professional Super Smash Bros. Ultimate for the Nintendo Switch? Too bad. You gotta watch Sonic do chip damage for about 7 minutes and wonder what could even happen if the design team had a little bit more time to work on it. Well, that's it for our online tier list. Again, don't take this stuff too seriously. We took the research and the process seriously, but online tier lists are just inherently flawed. Since the amount of delay will change from connection to connection, character strength will change from connection to connection. Since a lot of the top players don't play their mains online, we'll never fully know what the true meta looks like. Online play has been super helpful for keeping competitive Smash alive, but it's just not the most competitive form of Smash. So you should take every online tier list as flawed from the start. Even with the scene moving online, you can still get good practice. Be sure to check out our channel for tons of videos and streams about offline practice and play. Then head over to ProGuys.com for even more advice from top players and live coaches.